How do Islamic banks make money if they can't charge interest because of Sharia? First, and most important thing to know, Islamic Sharia compliant banking is not a system of banking prescribed in Islamic religious texts. As such, it is not of religious origin. Rather, it is actually a branch of banking, influenced by Islamic beliefs and practices. Origins As mentioned in the question, both giving and taking interest is strictly prohibited in Islam. Any method of money making which makes profit without taking risk is considered immoral. However, many modern influential Islamic leaders such as Madhudi came to realize that banking is essential for survival in the modern economy. They accepted it as a necessary evil of our age. Out of this was born a desire to develop a system that would try to adhere to Islam as much as possible. This led to the rise of Islamic banking. So the roots of Islamic banking lies in traditional banking, and not Islamic traditions, as believed by many. So how is it more Islamic? The actual reason for prohibition of interest in Islam is to avoid accumulation of wealth without actual risk-taking or hard work. So the risk factor should be more for bank. In traditional banking, capital is provided by bank against collateral for some amount of interest. Even if the client fails to pay up, the bank can seize the collateral. It is at no time in fear of loss. Other than unforeseen events such as deprecation of the collateral. Also, in the event of seizure, the bank does not have to pay back any amount to the client, even if the bank makes more than anticipated by considering amount paid till date plus value of collateral seized. In Islamic banking, there are many methods such as profit, loss sharing, renting etc. that the other answers described already very well. The common aspect to all those methods are. The bank is at increased risk of loss compared to traditional banking. There is no traditional interest. However, the bank is a business and needs to ensure it is profitable. This is done by implementation if many fees, fines etc. In effect, this will seem just like interest to the client. The profit is predetermined. Anything made by the bank in excess has to be returned, shared with the client. The negative side of first two bullet points above is that since the bank is at increased risk, point one, it has to charge more as service fee, fine etc. Point two, to cover itself. People who pay premiums on time will more often end up paying more than compared to interest at a traditional bank. However, as the profit is predetermined and there is no interest involved, there is no chance of it ever ballooning or spiraling out of control. The client can be considered as receiving much better protection for a slightly increased investment. Another important aspect, Islamic banks also have to ensure that the funds they receive are not channeled into Unislamic investments, such as in bars, casinos etc. even if legal and highly profitable. Economic Political Reasons the Arab countries are trying really hard to shore up their economies and diversify away from just selling oil. Look no further than the state-subsidized airline companies Emirates, Qatar Airlines etc. Coming back to banking, Islamic banking is a way for the Arab countries to differentiate and boost their banking sectors. They prey on people's religious sensibilities. Nobody has time to read Quran and Hadith and figure out if these banks are really following religious guidelines. Most consumers would see the ads and psychologically believe that perhaps there is some truth to it or at the very least it can't be worse than the traditional banks. Right there is the reason why they add Islamic to bank. You can read various stories online of how these banks pay huge money to get their products rubber stamped as Islamic by religious scholars. Don't let Islamic banks fool you. The reality is that we live in a global world and the international trade and commerce requires that we use banks and interest. There is also inflation. Our fiat currencies don't intrinsically hold value. Finally, all countries in the world have their central banks. These central banks control the interest rates through overnight rates. Islamic and traditional banks all borrow and lend money at the most basic level. All Islamic republics including Saudi Arabia issue bonds in national and international markets to raise money for their governments and pay interest on these bonds. Just like you don't really have a say in your government issuing bonds on your behalf, you don't have a say in financial sector charging interest on loans.